Thank you for joining Jennifer Shaw and Associates in our 2019 Webinar Wednesday series. We're coming to you live from downtown Washington, D.C. Our webinars are every Wednesday and now Friday, and you can find the upcoming schedule on our website. Past webinars and all recordings are also on our website on our YouTube channel, along with over 160 other recordings on federal contracting topics. All are complimentary. If you have questions for our question, if you have questions for our speaker today, you can email her directly with the contact information you'll see on the last slide. All right, this is a little bit about us. We are a Washington, D.C. based firm and provide services to federal contractors. This ranges from market analysis reports to proposal writing and also post award compliance. More information is on our website, so please visit us there. We do offer advertising in our newsletter, so you can reach out to this email if you'd like more information on that. All right, our speaker today is Regina, and she's going to be covering best practices in proposal management. Thank you for joining us today, Regina. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Thanks, Mallory. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, my name is Regina LaPierre. I have been in proposals for more than 10 years as both a writer and editor and as well as a manager. The title of this is Best Practices in Proposal Management, so that will be the focus of this, for this presentation. First slide, please. Proposal management can mean different things to different organizations. It, some clients, I'm a contractor, so I go to client sites and work with different clients who expect different things from the proposal manager. Uh, a lot of the duties are administrative and um, involve organizing people and timelines, but there is also often a heavy editorial and writing component where you might be tasked with writing the entire text section, management section, exec executive summary, etc. There's uh, also the storyboarding and solutioning that Proposal manager is often involved with subject matter experts and solution architects trying to get them to arrive at a solution that makes sense. And then there's support of the capture activities. Next slide, please. Capture managers and proposal managers should be joined at the hip throughout the whole process. The capture manager is somebody who is looking to put together the team. They're looking at the RFP and wondering if it's a viable uh, contract to pursue for the organization. They also have in their mind whether or not um, the company has the resources or how to delegate the resources to this particular effort. The capture manager will often lead the proposal effort at the beginning, identifying the opportunity. Is it realistic for the organization? Then he or she will put together a big gate review for leadership to determine whether or not to go forward. The big gate review will have all kinds of considerations, including price, number of resources, whether or not the opportunity to make sense for the future for the organization, whether they have the ability to carry out the requirements. The capture manager will also identify partners who can fill in holes. And he or she will put together a capabilities matrix for these partners to identify strengths and who should lead what sections and um, who, which company should be in, in charge of a uh, set of tasks that is outlined in the proposal. At this point, too, the caption manager working with the proposal manager will assign roles, decide which subject matter expert or which company will be leading which section of the technical response. Together, they can create a shared site, such as um, SharePoint or a Google site. And then they form the proposal team, which will include the solutions architects, uh, the subject matter experts, legal uh, people from legal department, executives, writers, and the graphic artist. Next slide, please. After the gate review, the proposal manager takes the lead. He or she will hold the kickoff, which will include having all the proposal team together in a room, going over the opportunity, what are our strengths and weaknesses, what does the competitive landscape look like? How can we ghost competitors? And um, what is the proposal plan? What's the calendar? What's the timeline? And at this point, too, um, the proposal manager will distribute the writer's packages, which will include the template that they need to populate. Proposal manager working with the capture manager sets the schedule, which will include the color reviews as well as the, concurrent, the concurrently running cost proposal process. He or she will develop those templates and writer's packages and distribute them and perhaps storyboard some solutions. Working with graphics, 
is another component of what the proposal manager does, making sure that um, the graphic artists uh, understand and can conceptualize some of the content, identifying which content would be best presented as a graphic or as a table. Again, they run the color reviews and they help to write and incorporate edits following each review. They also manage the administrative tasks, which we will talk about. Next slide, please. I mentioned the SharePoint site or the Google site. It's a shared site where people on the proposal team can participate and look at folders. And uh, some of the folders might be proprietary, which would just be to the um, lead company, the prime. Others might be accessible to the, the teaming partners. But you would have different folders on the, on the shared site. One would be the proposal artifacts. This would include the um, playbook, which might uh, some companies use what's called a playbook where you would have uh, Excel sheets. Uh, one would be like a compliance matrix, one would be proposal information, a roster of the different participants, members of the proposal team, as well as the outline and, and um, compliance matrix, I think I mentioned. Also on the shared site, you find the calendar, which the proposal manager would keep updated. There would be color review folders. There'd be a pink folder for um, documents to be posted to the, after the pink review, red review, et cetera, gold review. And then there'd be a folder for solicitation documents, the RFP and all its attachments. There's also be a folder for background information, any intelligence you might have on the customer, uh, as well as perhaps past RFPs and responses that are germane to this particular customer or this contract could be um, a follow-on contract, so maybe the earlier RFPs that would have been out. There would also be a folder for submittal documents, as well as what's called a wall of truth and or, a, excuse me, a style guide where it would be conventions of, of um, how you're going to phrase things. Uh, for example, are you going to use CONUS, OCONUS, or um, offshore? Uh, is government going to be capitalized or not? Often you can look at the RFP and see what the government wants or that particular agency wants for a language and can make that part of your wall of truth, as well as things like you know, your own personal company style, whether or not you use serial commas, double spacing, that sort of thing. Next slide, please. So working with solution architects, subject matter experts, and writers is a main component of the proposal manager's job. You have to make sure that as they develop the content, they're telling a compelling story and that the solution makes sense. Uh, so one of the things you might look for is whether they say, that we will do this, whatever the requirement is, but there's no proof to back it up. Uh, there's no proof point of where they've done it before, and there's maybe no viable solution of how they're going to do it. So those are the things to call out while the solution is taking form. Also, it's important to keep after them so that they stay on schedule. The writers who are assigned will be on schedule, but they might have some challenges with the subject matter experts that they're working with because these men and women have often have day jobs. They're on their customer sites all day, and it might not be in their aperture to get the proposal content finished on time. So in that case, try to work with them to um, perhaps have evening interviews on the phone or Saturday morning interviews and help them develop the content as much as you can. Also, during this time, the proposal manager is checking content against the compliance matrix to make sure that everything's staying on track and in, in alignment with the requirements. And he or, she, he or she will also have daily check-ins with the team. Next slide, please. Working with the executive team is very important. The senior executive uh, suite or the CEO should be engaged early on so that there are no surprises. Um, it's never fun when the CEO sits in on a red team review and doesn't like anything about the solution and wants everybody to go back to the drawing board. It's very unproductive. So, Make sure that they're engaged early, that they know of the solution. If they're not at pink review, they are briefed about each review so they know how it's coming together. Also, it's good to share uh, the solutioning with the pricing team to have at least one member of the pricing team in the meetings to ensure that there's a right sizing of the solution, that the costs being proposed match the level of effort that is going into the tech solution. And also check in with them legal, the, uh, whoever is assigned from the legal department to gather together attachments 
and um, register NAICS codes, et cetera, uh, make sure that they're on task and that things are being done in a timely way. And again, ongoing engagement with the executive level with meetings and debriefs, et cetera. Next slide, please. Well, in terms of a paper submission, you might have, um, you might, a couple of weeks out, you might want to think about what you need. Some proposals are really voluminous. You might need to order binders, labels for CDs, et cetera. You have to decide on the method of delivery if you're going to FedEx or hand carry. Always get a receipt. Hand carrying, if, it's, um, if you are in the DC area and it's a local agency with a nearby drop off, that will save you a day. That will, that will actually give you an extra day to work on the proposal. And again, make sure that you have your forms prepared ahead of time with the legal documents completed in advance. Next slide, please. The last step after a proposal has been submitted is the lessons learned discussion, which doesn't always happen because sometimes the team is very exhausted from the proposal effort and disbands and goes on vacation or whatever. But it's great to have what's called a lessons learned session or um, a hot wash where you sit down with a core group from the proposal team, distribute a matrix, and go through each element of the proposal. What went wrong? What went right? What was, what could use, um, what could use um, maybe uh, another uh, like recommendation, like perhaps do something differently next time. But always make sure that if somebody wasn't happy with the way something went, that they would have a positive recommendation to make. And you apply those lessons going forward, and they can actually be part of your background information if you pursue a similar effort. So thank you, everybody, for attending. I think that's the close of my presentation. And um, have a great holiday. Great. Thank you so much, Regina, for joining us. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the phone number or, I guess, just the email shown on your screen. And this concludes the webinar. Thank you. Thank you.